Welcome back everyone. So today we're going to be doing lesson six for unit six. Don't want one more six on there, might summon the devil. Uh, so what we're looking at is continuing our study of the Great Depression by looking at the New Deal. So thus far, most of our studies have been about the first part of this unit, which is really where did the Great Depression come from? What did it feel like? Now we're moving forward to what are the responses that actually happened to the Great Deal? So how did the government actually start intervening in order to try and fix it through government action? So when you're looking at these directions right now, you're probably looking at those essential questions and saying, oh my God, those are a lot of essential questions. Uh, it's not that this assignment is like a lot more work or something. It's just that when I was looking at the essential questions, I realized that this is an activity where you really, a lot of these could fit. So three through six. So basically some of the stuff that begins the response, how people disagreed about what the response should be, how the country changed, and then uh, to what extent was this response appropriate? Remember that essential question number six is the one you're doing for your axes paragraph, and this is the first time it's showing up because you're looking at what the response was and you get to evaluate for yourself whether you think that response was the right decision in dealing with the Great Depression. Finally looking at a response, so here it is. You'll notice in the middle that we've got two key skills today. So one is just using evidence. Now, that's a skill we haven't seen on here before. It's one that you actually do in your writing for the axes paragraphs. Uh, and that means you are saying, what are the most significant relevant facts, concrete details, any sort of information or examples that develop a topic? Because in this assignment, you're going to be assigned one of these government agencies that FDR created. Uh, there are hundreds of these things. We're just gonna focus on six or seven of them. Uh, you're gonna be assigned one of them and you need to elaborate on it to say what it was, where it came from, what it did, and how it fits into the Great Depression and the New Deal. So that first skill is just saying, you're gonna have to do a little bit of research and find a little bit of information on this. The second skill is annotation. So you're gonna be given a, a cartoon or two, your choice which one you do. Uh, and then you're gonna insert that into a slideshow you're gonna make. And we did this in class one time before. You can use different um, sort of shapes and stuff within Google Slides in order to point out different aspects of the cartoon and explain what they mean. So this is an activity we've sort of done before by creating a very short slideshow. Uh, the key concepts on the right for you, those are ultimately just what is the content we're covering, what's like the big picture that you need to understand, and here they are. The New Deal was a widespread approach to fixing the Great Depression through relief for affected Americans, recovery for the economy, and reform for the government's role in dealing with economic problems. So the New Deal lasted for many, many years. It did all these different sorts of things to address all the problems from the Great Depression. It was all encompassing like a program for every problem that the government saw. Now, look at that second concept though. People don't always agree if that's appropriate. While most Americans supported and benefited from the New Deal, there was disagreement about whether it was working or if it was necessary at all. So Americans finally got some help and they say, I agree that the government's doing with that. And that's why we see uh, FDR get resoundingly reelected three more times for president. That had never happened before. People agreed with it and they liked him. But at the same time, that doesn't mean everyone was on board. Differing, different Americans had differing ideas on whether the government should be doing in that in the first, first place. And that's if you go back to lessons four and five, where we set up some political terminology. The decision of whether people supported the New Deal or not depended on their political point of view. That's why that had to be established in lessons four uh, and lessons five. Lesson five. Okay, so all that is set up. Let me show you what you're going to be uh, actually doing in this assignment. So you should head over to Google Classroom and what you'll see is one, two, three, four, five, six. So within this assignment, when you open it, um, you're going to see a few different things. There's gonna be a directions document to tell you what you should be doing, a template for doing your work, and then an example that I made that I'll go over now to show you kind of what you should be doing in it to give you uh, an example. So let's look at the directions really quick before we look at what your work will ultimately look like. So remember, it says right here that you should be reading through these directions, making sure you understand them and following them step by step. Uh, directions video, you're watching it now, right? And then the file has been shared with you through Google Classroom. 
Now, there are, like I said, many different of these agencies that the New Deal and FDR created. Uh, too many for you to cover all of them. So here's how it's going to work. Topics will be assigned to you based on what does your last name start with? What letter? So A through C, that one, D through G, et cetera, et cetera. So use that as a guidance for which topic you're doing on this assignment. Uh, if you look at part B, I am fine with you teaming up from with other students. So if you're in period one and you have a friend in period three, you're welcome to work with them. Vice versa, if you're in period three and you have a friend in period one, you're welcome to work with them too. Collaborate over the internet probably at the same time. This is an activity we would have done in small groups in class. So while it's possible to do it on your own, I'm happy, I'm fine with you working together on this because uh, there's really no more chances for collaboration like that due to distance learning. What I do ask though is that if you team up with other people, groups of three or less, and choose the agency tied with one of your last names. The reason I split up the different topics by the last names is that so when people turn in their work, I can post some of like the exemplars of the work done to Google Classroom so you can see a little bit of information on each of these topics, not just the one you did. All right. Uh, make it visually appealing. Text is written by you, not copy pasted from the internet. All right. So what should it be? We have done this a few times in class, right? First slide, title slide with your agency's name. And if more than one person did it, put everyone's name there. A couple images. Second slide is details about what this thing was. When was it created? What did it aim to do? So bulleted text. But if you just want to answer these questions on there, I am good with that. Third slide is the cartoon. So for this, what you're gonna do is there will be a folder posted on that assignment in which you open it up and you find there's a couple different cartoon options for your assigned agency. Choose one or the other. Look at both of them and decide which one you understand better and do that one. What I've provided is a cartoon that is in favor of the agency and opposed to the agency. So remember, people disagree about it, so in favor and against anti or pro and anti. So your choice, which one you do, but what you're then going to do is pull that image, put it into your uh, slideshow directly, and then annotate it using uh, the shapes like we've done before to show what the key details mean and how they show the different perspectives on the new deal. All right. Uh, for information on these, I recommend you just start at Wikipedia. It's a good place to start. We're not in the age anymore of teachers hating Wikipedia. Just go there. All right, so let's go back to classroom. Those are the directions. Let me show you, uh, let's see, I'll open up the template that you've been shared with at first. So again, agency name, if you've got more than one person, put your names there. Second slide has the directions for what to do. So remember, a couple images, make it pretty, and to answer those questions. And the third one, Drop in that political cartoon, either the pro or the anti cartoon, and generally answer these questions. You can use these shapes. Uh, you can manipulate them to annotate it and point things out. Uh, and you can add your own shapes and stuff if you would like to as well. All right, so let's look at my example. I'll actually like explain it as well. Uh, so you actually know what it is all about. So just take me a second, guys. Computer's not happy about loading this. You can do it. All right, so that should look good for you. I might be covering uh, the title a little bit, but the one I'm doing for you, it was called the Agricultural Adjustment Administration, AAA. Notice all these um, agencies are abbreviated to what the beginning letters are. And so that's why we often call them like alphabet soup or alphabet agencies, because there's all these different ones. Notice I put a couple pictures there and my name. So remember the first slide is kind of just a summary of what this thing was. So uh, the context is in the years leading up to the Great Depression, agriculture had been on the decline. So prices had been going down and down and down. Farmers could make less and less money. So what happened in the Great Plains was the Dust Bowl that we already studied, right? Farmers struggled to make money. They couldn't charge high prices. They grew more crops to try and make more money. And then, like I said, it resulted in the Dust Bowl. So what did the AAA try to do? Well, it aimed to help farmers. That's directly who it was trying to help, saying that Farmers have lost their land, they can't grow things, and when they do grow things, they can't make money off of it because the prices are so low. So what the government aimed to do is 
give money directly to the farms to limit their crop production. And this seems a little counterproductive. So it's like, so you're saying the government was going to pay farmers not to grow things. That's exactly what they wanted to do. So here was the logic. If they grew fewer crops, the price would increase because it was rarer. It's just how, how uh, supply and demand works in economics. The price of crops would go up. The farmers could then start to sell them, make more money, and get the agricultural industry back on its feet. In the meantime, the farmers aren't growing stuff, so the government's giving them some stimulus money, sound familiar, in order to help along the way. The ultimate goal of this was direct relief to suffering farmers, but also looking at how the price of farm goods was too low for the economy to be successful. So by uh, sort of interfering in the economy, the government was hoping that the prices would recover and that would help fix economic issues. So the AAA only lasted for three years and the Supreme Court ruled it unconstitutional in 1936. What they said is that it violated a state's right to control to trade within their own state and it did more than the Constitution allows the federal government to do. Well, what happened is FDR had gone in and said, Congress, work with me. We're going to give all this money to farmers. And then the Supreme Court said, well, you can't do this because it's contained within just that state, and that state gets to decide how to deal with things created within their own state. And they also said, FDR, you are acting like a king, like a dictator. This is too much power. You can't do that. And so away it went. So it lasted a few years. It helped some farmers, but it did not persist after that. So like I said, uh, there's a couple cartoons you can choose to put in there. Uh, which one did I choose? I think I chose the anti one. So it's tale titled Don't Crush Them, all right? And I'll go over the details right here. So here are the details they included. In yellow, this tells us that this steamroller that kind of crushes things is labeled the Farm Relief Bill. And so it's representing the AAA as um, flattening land and flattening something else in the process, as you can see. Okay, FDR is there on the left driving the steamroller, so he's the one driving forward this farm relief bill. And the farmers are by his side, cheering the president on. Let her go, Mr. President! And they're even labeled U.S. farmers. Now, those groups in the foreground on the bottom in the magenta color, those would be groups affected by the law. So it was helping farmers, but if you look how it's labeled, it says taxpayer and federal economy, businessman and tested economic laws, ultimate consumer and traditional American principles. This author is claiming that, yes, this is helping farmers, like they're going choo-choo, they're on for the ride, but it's bad for all these other groups in the economy. So what is the author's point of view? It is a negative depiction of FDR. He is crushing the economy and business by paying farmers not to grow crops. Notice that phrase, don't crush them. Uh, he is crushing traditional American principles in the process. Remember, before the Great Depression, the government never interfered like this before, and now they're interfering, so they're ruining American economic traditions. All right, so that gives you an idea of what your, slide should, your slideshow should look like, how it has the cartoon, how it has the summary before that, and how it uses the annotation skills uh, along the way. So revisiting our things before we wrap up. Uh, your essential questions, there's a lot of them. Please don't be worried about that. You're collecting evidence. Uh, I was looking over there, not at you. Uh, collecting evidence and annotating the cartoon. And on the right are the really big ideas that you should be figuring out from this. Uh, remember, you can work with a classmate or someone from the other period if you want to. Just include both people's names on there. Uh, after a few days after this is due, I'll look at all the work and put some exemplars on there. So yes, you might have done, you know, let me think. Uh, the National Recovery Administration, but you didn't find out what the Tennessee Valley Authority was, well, I'll post all the work so you can still scroll through it and see what these different agencies were all about. All right, folks, that's it. So again, team up with people if you want to, but no pressure there. This is about learning the bulk of what the New Deal was, and you need to know what the New Deal was before we can really decide was it good or bad for the country, and that is where we're going next. All right, folks, see me next time. Adios.